Right. Hi, friends. Uh, greetings to all of you. You know, you have been so uh, faithful to the meeting uh, prayers and the word of God. God has definitely plans to bless you all. Hallelujah. So today I have a very powerful teaching on, uh, you know, uh, Mahane. Hallelujah. And uh, last time I preached to you about the 12 tribes of Israel and uh, you uh, you knew how the teachings transformed you all hallelujah and how the, the teachings will help you to get uh, the power of god in your life amen praise the lord so let this meeting be interactive let our teaching be interactive as i put questions uh, i'll be sending you some of the uh, questionnaire answers also in between so to see how you are all doing okay where whether you are able to answer whether you understood or not okay so yeah can somebody uh, read uh, one minute? Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Can somebody read Genesis? Uh, one minute. Genesis chapter uh, 32, verse number one. Genesis. Chapter 32 and verse number 1. Can somebody read it, please? Yeah. Jacob As also, Jacob went on his way, yeah. some angels met him. Yeah. When he saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he named the place Mahanaim. Okay. Yeah. So this word called Mahane, I hope you are seeing the uh, whiteboard, okay? Uh, this yeah. word called Mahanaim is actually a plural of this word called Mahane. Okay. Now, Mahane in Hebrew, it means camp. Okay. So, uh, it, it very clearly uh, says that uh, Mahane is camp, but Jacob called it with a plural form of Mahane means, uh, in other words, it's called as camps. Okay. So, that means when Jacob was returning, he saw, you know, a few camps of the people, okay, like, you know, few camps of angels, like, he saw it probably like this on the screen, you may be seeing, he saw a few camps, that means plural, okay, so there were angels, uh, which uh, he saw, and uh, so maybe he saw a group like this, okay, and that's why he called it as Maha name, that means the camps, okay, so the camps, not just Mahane, a camp, but he said it will is Mahane, a camps. But uh, what the scholar says is that pro, after seeing these camps, Jacob got, uh, he had lots of people with him. That means his servants, everybody, his people, uh, his uh, band of people who left along with him from Padan Aram, okay, uh, from Laban's place, uh, they moved uh, along with him to come to Egypt. So, he divided his camps into two, okay? Uh, yeah, so one and two, okay? So, before he could go on to meet his brother, he divided his camps into two, hallelujah. And that's why what scholar says that probably he saw two camps of angels. Wow, hallelujah. So, that's why they interpreted a maha name as uh, the meaning as two camps, but actually it is it may not be two camps, but it may be many camps. Hallelujah. So you can write down these notes even as you are watching. Hallelujah. It may not exactly be two camps, but it may be many camps. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I hope you all are uh, getting uh, knowledge of what this means. Okay, to Jacob. Okay, now. The question comes saying that why was Jacob, you know, chosen? Why was Jacob chosen, you know, to uh, see the angels of God? Why were angels ministering to Jacob? Hallelujah. So we will go back to this. Okay. So slowly we will reverse back and see what happened to Jacob. Can somebody read Genesis chapter 28 and verse number 12? Can somebody read it on the screen? I've written it. Okay. For those. Hello, okay, who might not hear me properly on the screen? It's written Genesis chapter 28, verse 12. 
can somebody read it quick he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of god were ascending and descending on it oh praise the lord hallelujah so you look at this he had a dream where he was present and then he saw angels coming up and down they were descending on jacob hallelujah and that is the time when he was alone at a place called luz which again he said it as bethel which means actually the house of el or you know house of el beth means house and el means god okay so el o he it it is derived from the word called elohim which means god and the short form is el hallelujah so very clearly he had this uh, what he called uh, thing where it is the house of god hallelujah and he dreamed and from that time from that moment onwards angels were constantly around jacob hallelujah they were constantly around jacob hallelujah amen ministering to jacob praise the lord hallelujah now uh, you know from from the time that he left that place bethel and then he moved to his father in law's house okay and the angels were with him even when he was in his father in law's house the angels were ministering to him praise the lord hallelujah amen you know so the angels did not leave him hallelujah even when he was in a wicked place you know where his father in law was tormenting him the angels did not leave him so let, let us just see you know what he called how uh, how all this happened and uh, what he called how this uh, you can watch how what he called a, the even in his father in law's house a, angels were ministered ministering to him so turn your bibles to genesis chapter 31 and verse number uh 11 can somebody read it genesis chapter 31 and verse number 11 the angel of god said to me in the dream jacob i answered here i am yeah read it and he oh. he said look up and see that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked speckled or spotted for i have seen all that laban has been doing to you okay i am the god of bethel where you anointed a pillar and where you made a vow to me now leave this land at once and go back to your native land Oh my God! So uh, you all have an idea of how many years did uh, Jacob live in his father-in-law's house? How many years? Twenty years. Twenty okay. years. Very good. Hallelujah! Watch the screen on your mobile phones or on your laptops. He lived around his uh, father-in-law's okay. house for twenty years. That means the angels, Hallelujah, kept a watch on Jacob. since 20 years hallelujah praise the lord amen hallelujah they watched over him for 20 long years hallelujah right where you know they met him at bethel hallelujah that is the place where the angelic ministration to jacob start started now why did uh, uh, jacob had this privilege or why did the angels minister to jacob you know since 20 years why because of one thing where he was a covenant child hallelujah amen or he was a covenant partner with god can we all shout a big hallelujah hallelujah everyone shout a big hallelujah, hallelujah. okay hallelujah amen now why why it's very important for you to understand this about the come being a covenant partner now where did uh, jacob became a covenant partner he became covenant partner you uh, know after receiving the come on read this on the screen read this come on blessing of his father yes who 
Isaac. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry. This is Isaac. Hallelujah. Blessing of his father, Isaac. Where? Come on, let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 28 to 29. Yeah, read it, please. Yeah, read it. Yeah, read it, please. Yes, yeah, May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness and abundance of grain and new wine. Okay. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Amen. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Bless. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. very clearly we see that he became a covenant child. Hallelujah. So, very 100% we see that once he got the blessings, he was entitled for angelic protection. Now, I want you to answer this question, okay? Watch your screen, okay? Yes. Are you a covenant child of God? Yes. Yes. Or yes. no? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are yes. you a covenant child of God? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, is, is your covenant greater than the covenant of Jacob or, you know, not? Is it great? Yes. Or it is greater. Yes. Than the it is greater. It is it greater. Is greater. Ah, okay. Why is it great? Because Jacob was covenant to physical blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Just read that verse. Okay. But you are a covenant to both physical blessings. Okay. And then, and then at another side, you are a covenant to also spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy? Are you happy? Praise the Lord. How many of you are happy? Praise the Lord. You are both a covenant to physical blessings and you are both a covenant to spiritual blessings. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this covenant in, is in Jesus Christ. Now, I want to ask you a straight question. A straight question. Hallelujah. Do you believe that angels are watching over you? Yes or no? Yes, very much. Yes, yes, pastor. Yes, very much. Okay. So how many angels are watching over you? <laughs> That's the question. I How's think it? so many. <laughs> so many, you know, you must have a number. How many? Okay. Come on, tell me. How many angels are watching you? How many? Okay. To solve that answer. Two, two, two. Not at all. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Sorry. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 22. Please go through that. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 22. Please. Yeah, read it, please. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> which, which translation are you reading, uh, Banu? Uh, NIV. NIV. Okay. But if you see in NKGV, it says, you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Not just thousands. Innumerable. innumerable. Yeah. Hallelujah. So how many angels are there along with you? Amen. Innumerable. innumerable. Innumerable angels are watching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Innumerable angels. You see, that's prophetically revealed uh, to Jacob as camps where he said, Mahanaim. Hallelujah. Mahanaim. So that means, you know, many camps. Hallelujah. That means groups of angels. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You have, 
you angels are watching over you but only one thing is that they are invisible hallelujah they are not visible they are invisible they are watching over you hallelujah amen they are keeping a watch on you they are invisible but the condition is that you have to be a child of god you have to be connected to god you have to be a covenant child of god that's why teaching is very important hallelujah amen see the more you attend teaching your mind and heart will be transformed so don't take teaching bible teaching easily hallelujah bible teaching is the meat hallelujah all every other evangelical meetings which you go i tell you they are just emotional lifters that's all they will lift you up emotionally that's it outside they will lift you up emotionally for a moment okay but the foundation will be given by sound bible teaching praise the lord therefore make it a point the more you attend bible teaching the more you know your eyes will be opened and the more you will know about god and his truth hallelujah you have come to an innumerable company of angels hallelujah and you know this is the truth my dear friends hallelujah this is the truth amen praise the lord hallelujah can we all shout praise the lord can we praise all... the lord you have come to an innumerable company of angels that innumerable company of angels are along with you you see that now uh, the thing is uh, sometimes you know uh, this you have to see by faith because you are a child of god okay and uh, sometimes your eyes are very very natural and uh, they cannot see the angels but okay you must believe that they are there by faith hallelujah okay so they are always there around you you are in the company of thousands and thousands innumerable company you are already there you are there as a child of god so so you are connected because you have you have the dna of god with you you have the spiritual dna of god with you and you are connected with the angel so you don't need to feel helpless you don't need to feel depressed you don't need to feel frustrated you don't need to feel that you are without an answer because you know every answer is there in the scriptures for you hallelujah you know you are in the company of innumerable angels amen hallelujah thank you jesus can we all say thank you jesus amen thank you jesus now, now, now let us go more deeper into this uh, bible study about you know how the innumerable company of angels are there with you and what these angels can do and how you can activate these angels and how these angels can actually come and help you my dear friends hallelujah so they will come and help you so like they came to uh, jacob and they helped him hallelujah they came to jacob and they helped him actually the threat of his brother isau was very very real very real because isau had plans to kill him and comfort but the angel stopped and the fear that jacob had it was not just not don't think that the fear that he had was uh, an ordinary fear he had a genuine fear because he knew his brother very well his brother was a hunter by profession his brother was a wild man he he, he used to kill animals killing people was nothing for his brother easily he would kill okay and he already planned to kill and jacob his jacob's fear was very very uh, original natural and he knew that his brother would do harm to him his brother would not forget the injustice that he did but the angels came to help jacob my dear friends hallelujah so it's like that the angels are always there my dear friends hallelujah you know they are there for you to activate they are there for you to ask they are there for you in every situation my dear friends hallelujah now look as you as i end this teaching you will get a great confidence because there are many more truths that are going to come up okay can somebody read uh, sorry uh, matthew chapter 26 and verse number 53 yeah can somebody read it matthew chapter 26 verse number 53 read it please hurry up do you think that i cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with with more than 12 legions of angels amen one amen. legion one legion is equal to how many 
6000 okay so 12 into 6 is equal to 1 lakh 17. how much how much how much sorry i am very weak in maths uh, 12 in 12 fives uh, how much it's uh, 12, 12 into 6 is how much sorry <laughs> okay fine 6 fives 12 672 na first ah uh, yeah Twelve six seventy two. Very good. Okay, so that means Jesus had access to seventy two thousand angels. Sorry, these are not amount. Okay, Jesus had access to seventy two thousand angels. He angels. Had. He said, "If I ask and if I would have pray, I will get seventy two thousand angels at my disposal to help me." He had the power to ask. Here, one big revelation we can get is that you can ask. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. you can in fact also pray you know which is nothing but asking hallelujah you can pray for angelic help hallelujah you know for the growth of your ministry for the growth of your uh, family life for the growth of for answers to your problems for different i'm going to share with you what all problems even you can pray and ask angels to help hallelujah because these are all biblical you know it, jesus said that he will be there you know if if you if we would ask the angels to come they would come and deliver him hallelujah but he chose to voluntarily die for you all hallelujah so it's very clear my dear friends that you know you can ask the angels hallelujah definitely you can ask the angels to help you and they will definitely come to your help my dear friends definitely there's no doubt about it that they 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 are going to refuse any one of you hallelujah so sometimes these angels are invisible sometimes these angels are visible if in fact you can pray to god to ask uh, that your eyes will be opened and you can see these angels coming okay now look at this okay this only some uh, godly people can do that okay and uh, this was actually uh, very well understood by elisha hallelujah in fact he prays for his servant hallelujah and uh, come on can somebody go and open your bibles to the book of second kings chapter 6 and verse number uh um uh, what he called uh 17 please second kings chapter 6 verse number 17 can somebody read it yeah go on and elisha prayed and said lord i pray open his eyes that he may see then the lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and he be and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around elisha amen hallelujah hallelujah elisha had a knowledge that angels were around him now the difference between you and me that is that we don't have a sound bible teaching where we don't have a knowledge that angels are our privilege it is our right to ask we don't have that knowledge but elisha had that not elisha had a very clear knowledge about this, the angels helping him and his servant did not have probably you are like the servant hallelujah probably you are like the servant you are in the presence of the great prophet called jesus but your eyes are not open okay maybe maybe okay your eyes are not open hallelujah my eyes are not open but we are in the company of the great prophet jesus christ hallelujah all we have to do is ask jesus saying open my eyes lord please open my eyes to see angels hallelujah you know so the bible the bible says this uh, what he called uh, william braham branham in the history okay he used to minister with angels so easily so very comfortably hallelujah in fact there are some new age uh, Uh, present day 21st century uh, what he called uh, bible teachers who have actually seen uh, the working of angels okay because see they 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 go through this systematic bible study and they understand saying that okay uh, seeing angels is my privilege they understand very clearly hallelujah but what we do is that we don't read the bible we don't understand how angels work and we don't know how to activate them see always understand okay when we read the scripture it gives substantial proof to us that you know this is the truth which we can believe so you should keep going back to the scriptures keep reading them keep reflecting on them and then 
you will be a confident person. Hallelujah. So angels are there for your help. Jesus asked for angels. Elisha knew he had. Jesus, Jesus was aware that angels were always at his disposal. Elisha was aware that angels were always at his disposal. Now, now look, look, I'm going to share some very other powerful truths also with you, which you will be really very, very touched. Hallelujah. Now look at this, okay? Even when you die, if you don't have angels uh, along with you, hallelujah, you know, that's it. You are not going to heaven at all. Remember this. You are not going to heaven. Heaven is, you cannot, why you cannot go to heaven? Because you don't know its navigation. You don't know its navigation. You don't know where heaven is. You don't know. You don't know how to go there. Okay. How to go. When you die, who will carry your soul? You don't know. Who will carry your soul? These are the questions. Ask yourself. When you die, okay, who's going to be the person who will carry your soul? Do you know where you can go? Do you know in the space there are so many galaxies? Do you know which galaxy is heaven? <laughs> no answer, right? Do you know which planet is heaven? No answer. Do you know the address or come on, tell me, anybody knows the GPS of heaven? Anybody knows to go there? Is there a GPS to heaven where you can go? Then how? Then how you can go? The question comes, how you can go to heaven? How? The question comes. Hallelujah. Amen. How you can go to heaven? Now look at this. Luke chapter 16 and verse number 22. Can somebody read it? Please. Luke chapter 16, verse number 22. Read it. Come on. Somebody read it. So it was the it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torments in heads. Uh, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and no, cool no, no. my... Enough, 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 enough. I just want you to read uh, um, uh, what you call Luke 16, 22. Okay. First. Yeah, read it, please. I read already, Pastor. Oh, yes. Can you read it again? If you don't yeah. Mind? So, it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Okay. The rich man also died and was buried. Oh, my God. So, where did the angels take him? You know, where did the angels take him? Hallelujah. They took him into Abraham's oh no? Hallelujah. bosom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at this. I have drawn a very beautiful picture with my beautiful handwriting about how when you are dying, you know, who is there at your deathbed? Who is there at your deathbed? Angels. Hallelujah. And when you die, you know, it's very clearly written in that parable. That's why Bible teaching is your hope. Praise the Lord. The more you are aware of Bible teaching, the more you will know the truth. Hallelujah. You will know the complete truth of God's word. Hallelujah. So very clearly Luke 16.22 says, Beggar died and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Where is Abraham? In heaven. Where is Abraham's bosom? What is the meaning of Abraham's bosom? Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of Abraham's bosom? Okay. What is the meaning of Abraham's bosom? Bosom is means chest or you know, or what, you know, the upper part, okay? That means, uh, that is the meaning of bosom. So can anybody tell me where is Abraham's bosom? Where is it? What is the meaning of it? Come on, anybody can try? Anybody? Iraq? No, 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 no. Abraham's bosom here is a symbolic meaning of heaven. Praise the Lord. 
That's it. Where Abraham is there. That's it. It's a meaning of the place of comfort. Or as we call it has paradise. The beggar was carried to paradise. To explain paradise, to explain heaven, it's concealed or encapsulated in the scripture. You know, in this word called the beggar was carried into Abraham's bosom. That means to a place of comfort. Hallelujah. You know, the mother's bosom, the child takes and puts the mother on her bosom and the child is comforted. Hallelujah. Same way, when you die, the angels come to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, when Jesus died, the angels were present. John chapter 20, verse 20, 12. It says the angels were sitting, one at the head of Jesus and one at the feet of Jesus and they helped him in resurrection. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So even the, have you ever read, even the body of Moses, hallelujah, was preserved by the angels. Can you read that? Jude chapter 1 and verse number 9. Read that please. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Jude chapter 1 verse number 9. Can somebody read it please? Yeah, quickly. Yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses hmm. dared not bring against him a, a reviling accusation but said the Lord rebuke you. Amen. See that? Amen. Michael was guarding the angels. Hallelujah. Here, we again see a deep revelation where there are divisions in angels. Hallelujah. They are divisions. Where they are archangels. Hallelujah. That means, uh, you know, these are sent to minister to, you know, like uh, greater men of God. Hallelujah. Like Jesus or uh, great prophets like Daniel. Not ordinary people like you and me. Okay. These are sent to greater men of God. Okay, now the, now let, let us go to an entire diff, entirely different teaching of what are the different hierarchies of angels and what are the different, you know, categories of angels. Hallelujah. Now there are angels which are actually, okay, now listen, which are act, we, who actually function as God himself. Amen. Number one, these are the highest category of angels who actually function as God himself. They are the persona of God. They are the, uh, they are the, uh, the being of God himself. They are the breath of God himself. Hallelujah. They carry the name of God on their head. They are different category of angels. Hallelujah. They are God himself. And we see all through the scripture, we see it in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament. Very clearly. Now look, look at this. Okay. Can you... Can you read this word? Exodus chapter 3 verse number 2. Quickly, can you read this word? We are running out of time, I think. Uh, yeah, another 20 minutes. Yeah, Exodus chapter 3 verse number 2. Read it. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see that, you know, Abraham saw a burning bush. Sorry, Moses. He saw a burning bush. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He saw a burning bush. Praise the Lord. Very clearly, he saw a burning bush. Amen. It was burning. Praise the Lord. And who appeared to him in the midst of the burning bush? It was an angel. And in fact, the angel spoke like God himself. He spoke that I am the Lord who delivered you. He did not say I am the angel. In fact, he said, I am the Lord who delivered. He he knew that you he, he had the being of God himself. He had the presence of God himself. And you know, we can see in the scriptures, you know, I want I want you all to go to an amazing scripture in the book of Acts. Okay. I really loved that scripture as I was doing meditation. Okay. Now now look at this. Go to the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse number 53, please. Read it. 
who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it yes you see that the law was given praise the lord the law was given by the direction of angels wow wonderful praise the lord everyone shout hallelujah 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 amen you see now look at this another verse where you can see the angels working as god the himself exodus chapter 23 verse number 20 come on read it please exodus chapter 23 verse number 20 Read it. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Amen. Hallelujah. So, behold, I am sending an angel with you. That means, you know, an angel was sent. Hallelujah to the people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you read in that same verse, Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse number twenty-three? Can you read? Exodus chapter twenty-three, verse number twenty-three. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Hallelujah! You see, very how beautifully it's written, saying that my angel will go before you and he will bring you men. Hallelujah! You see that. Are you seeing the picture of the angel over here? A oh, beautiful, you know, praise the Lord. You know, my angel will go before you, Amen. Will bring you to the praise the Lord, Hallelujah. How beautiful, you know, it is where uh, God is very clearly saying that my angel will go before you and bring you into the land, and the, my angel will actually, you know, work. and deliver you from the amorites from the canaanites and from every other nation who is tormenting you so god himself it was like angel going is like god himself going so these were the angels that had the persona of god himself that had the character of god himself who were actually representation not just representations they were god himself they were god themselves they were like how you are the sons of god they are the sons of god so these are the highest category of angel as the sons of god yeah but remember this all angels are sons of god but all angels are the sons of god in fact all believers are the sons of god but okay they differ in the function praise the lord they differ in the function so these angels are have a different function of you know being and talking like god himself they differ in the authority and the function that they have okay now look at this another thing let us go you know uh, and understand how else angels can minister and in the end we will see how you can really be benefited by them hallelujah now they are angels you know of war you know that already they are angels who do war and the angels who are who are for your comfort hallelujah now they are angels for your comfort praise the lord when you are weeping or when you are depressed or when you are you know going through emotional turbulence then these angels can help you come and comfort you can you read this word you know matthew chapter 4 and verse number 11 can somebody read it please Matthew chapter four eleven verse eleven. And another person, open your Bible to this another uh, thing which I am writing on the screen. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Okay, yeah. Some other person can read one Kings chapter nineteen verse number seven. Yeah, anybody, anybody for that matter. so here we see that the angels came and ministered and comforted jesus at another place we see that the angels came and comforted over elijah hallelujah can somebody read that quickly and the angel of the lord came back the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for you amen praise amen. the lord hallelujah <laughs> didn't condemn him didn't do anything you know to disturb him because he was already depressed 
and they said just you know they comforted him and they said that hallelujah arise and eat and you know the journey is big and they gave and they ministered to uh, elijah you know from out of his depression they brought and they comforted him by giving him food when he was weary and helping him you know to get on to the journey and then he ran for 40 days with that uh, food which he ate it was a manna i believe he ran for 40 days like the children of israel for 40 years they ran with the strength of the manna he ran for 40 days until he went to mount horeb that is the great kind of comfort that this angel gave to him. Now, look at this, my dear friends. Okay. Even you. Uh, no, now I'm going to talk about you. You have angels around you. Praise the Lord. Who are always there. If you are a covenant child, praise the Lord. Now, I, I want to show a scripture where, where it shows that, you know, there are angels around you. And these angels... Look, they see the face of the Father for you. Praise the Lord. They are constantly reporting to God what you are doing, where you are going, how you are living, what is your problem. Where you know, now look at this. Okay. Matthew chapter 18. Go here to Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 10. Read it, please. Beautiful words. I love this verse. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven. Yes. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Now, I want, to, I want to ask you, who are these little ones? Are they kids? Or does it mean or are they children? Who are these little ones, please? We, we are those little ones? Or... No, tell me biblical proof. I want biblical proof. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these little ones? Did Jesus... Okay, let me ask a question to all of you. Did Jesus talk when he said uh, little ones? Did he talk about uh, what he called kindergarten kids? Yes or no? Yes or no? Come on, nobody is answering. Are you all there in the teaching or are you already sleeping? Anybody? <laughs> no, yes, no, no, we yes, are yes, here. Yes, okay. Yes or no? Just tell me yes or no. I won't yes, spoil yes. anything. Huh? Yeah? Yes, he spoke. Yes, Madhavi says yes. Anybody else? Yes. Brother, I was uh, driving, driving car. Acha, acha, acha. Sashiana, praise the Lord. Oh, driving okay. at least. <laughs> acha, acha, yes. No, Going but actually, no, these are not kindergarten children. Okay. <laughs> Why? Come on. You read Matthew chapter 10. Okay. Uh, Matthew chapter 10. Now, you read, uh, sorry, you read uh, Matthew 18 chapter and verse number 10, right? Just read the context of the 18th chapter. Uh, you Instead of 10, you just go a little above and read. Uh, verse number four. Read verse number four. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Yes. So, whoever humbles, the, so the context is that whoever humbles himself like a little child. So, the context is you. It's not little children. <laughs> okay? Are you understanding? That means the context is not kindergarten children who uh, their angels look at the face of the father. No. The context is you who humble yourself like a little child. Okay? Now, uh, let me ask you one question. Okay? Okay? Do adults humble? Do adults humble? Yes or no? Come on, reply to me. No. Difficult. It's difficult. Difficult? No, I will tell it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will tell it's impossible. You know why? I have seen so much. Adults have a lot of ego. A lot of pride. 
you know had adults humbled no today churches would have millions but today churches have hundreds why because adults don't know how to become like children they don't know how to become like children but whoever humbles himself like a little child he will have access to the kingdom of heaven so who is jesus talking about it's talking about adults who humble like children so listen to this okay like these like children it's not adults to humble along with children it's not like that adults who humble like children they will have access to the kingdom of heaven so and their angels will see the face of the father in heaven so that means i as a believer who humbled like a child to accept jesus amen the humility is a very big thing very big thing i think only only pastors or men of god believers that i don't have any guarantee that they are humble <laughs> okay <laughs> really <laughs> why because you know all the time we have, we have to go to brother sister praise the lord brother sister praise the lord you know <laughs> please come to the church brother we have so much of experience of humility you should not get angry with the believers you should be patient with the believers you should be enduring with the believers oh my god every day we have to take a humble form men of god hallelujah you know believers i don't think so very few here and there they know how to humble and how to listen otherwise you know there will not be need of repeated teaching to humble and to listen to humble and to obey to humble so it's talking about adults and their angels they see the face of the father amen praise the lord hallelujah everybody say hallelujah hallelujah so you have angels around you who see the face of the father in heaven praise the lord hallelujah now let me quickly summarize okay they are guiding angels also now i told you that they are angels who are protective that they are around you uh, right now you may not be seeing but i promise to you there are angels around me in fact many of the angels they have gone on work based on my prophecy i have told to people 15 days this will happen they went and did the work and came and gave the victory and gave the testimony i told one month it will happen one month i told seven days it will happen i told three days it will happen sometimes i told in four hours it will happen in four hours the angels around me went and did the work and the people said next day saying you prayed four hours fever will go down it went down praise the lord so they although you may not see that you oh know but the i may not see but the angels around me there and not only me to every covenant child there are angels around him so there are angels now i told you about protective angels next there are angels who will guide you praise the lord hallelujah you know never go anywhere without the guidance of angels i didn't come to hyderabad without the guidance of angels i came to hyderabad by the guidance of angels otherwise you know in ministry being full time you know coming to an unknown place having zero tires you know no church no partners here leaving all the partners there in bangalore and moving to hyderabad and then when i moved to hyderabad god raised up you know different set of partners to you know outside of my church ministry to help me how did you all come to me it's because angels nothing but angels they are angels who guide you praise the lord hallelujah amen now look at this i like this verse Genesis chapter twenty four and verse number seven. Now, can somebody read? Some other person get ready with verse number forty. Genesis chapter twenty four, verse number forty. One person, seven, one person. Come on, read it. The Lord of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my family, and who spoke to me and swore to me, saying, "To your descendants I give this land." He will send his angels before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. Amen. Yes, angel, you know Rebecca. We see all this, and then the servant. Praise the Lord! You know I get goosebumps right now. You know Abraham is telling uh, my my God, whom I serve, he will send the angel to you. He is telling to the servant. he will take that he will take you to my father's house and from there you will pick up a 
bride for my son Isaac. And this angel led that servant exactly to the well where Rebecca, that is relative. Imagine no address, no GPS. Imagine today we have GPS. That servant did not have GPS. His GPS was angels only. Praise the Lord. You know, and he went exactly and then he put a condition. Angel gave him the wisdom to put that condition. He put the condition. Rebecca came, watered one camel. Then Rebecca offered to water the remaining nine camels. Total ten camels she watered. Extra effort. And then servant knew that she is only the one. In fact, he blessed God saying, Oh my God, the angels are with my master Abraham. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Praise the Lord. Seeing that miracle, no? Seeing that miracle, Laban and Nahor, they were shocked. They were shocked. They said, Oh God, this is uh, really wonderful. And they sent, Hallelujah. So you see that, my dear friends, Hallelujah. How beautifully, how beautifully angels can guide you. They can guide you to find your life partner. Put them to use. Pray. Tell those angels. Go. If you are a covenant child, tell those angels. It's in your hands. You know, to ask them to go and find a life partner for you. Ask them to now see, I can go to any part of the world by the help of angels. I can do anything by the help of angels. Because they are there always at my disposal. Hallelujah. The more you uh, employ them, the more you activate them, the more the blessing for you. But if you fail to activate them, nothing will happen. So it's a life of prayer that can lead you, my dear friends, to activate those angels that I can go on and on and say more. Okay. So I told you that angels are as God himself. Angels uh, do comfort. Angels are watchmen angels, guardian angels, protective angels. Angels are ministering angels. That means they minister to you you see, when I came to Hyderabad, I was shocked that today, you know, uh, what do you call in our Tuesday meetings, uh, families who love me because I'm a very emotional guy. Okay. I like people who love me and people like very average uh, with no love and fun. I don't gel that much. But the angels of God only brought such people who, who love me. Hallelujah. I, I am that kind of child. I'm a, to be very honest, I'm a pampered child. <laughs> Okay, that's a, not my mistake. That's the mistake of my mother. Okay, she pampered me so much with love that I cannot adjust it with anybody or normal. <laughs> and today in my ministry, I see only people who love, you know, full of love. They are weak people. They are they are people who still need to grow. They are they are, they are the people who still need to what you call learn the scriptures. But they are full of love. Hallelujah, and. This is the work of angels. So we see, we saw in Elisha's case, they are warrior angels. We saw how you can pray and ask angels for your for your deliverance. We saw how the angels can be at your bedside when you die and they are your GPS to heaven. Remember, if you don't have angels when you die, I tell you, you're not going anywhere. You're not, your soul is not even going one, one kilometer also. When you die, angels are you know, the ones it will guide you. So I told you, angels give you divine direction. Hallelujah. They gave in Exodus. They, they guided the, uh, the children of Israel. They guided. In fact, that's what I made you to read. Acts chapter 7 verse 53. The law was received by the direction of angels. Hallelujah. Then I saw. Now, uh, let me come to you with a different category. Okay. Of warrior angels. Hallelujah. These are the angels which you need a lot. I need a lot. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now go and read Daniel chapter 10 and verse number 13. Come on, read it. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. You see that? Now, there was an angel in a very inferior, uh, what he called, uh, war. 
who got actually trapped by the prince of persia okay until he himself got help from another higher division of angel called michael hallelujah this angel was sent you know as a messenger actually but even the even the messenger could not deliver the message because there was a evil principality guarding evil principality come on everybody are you are you watching everybody are you watching the uh, screen yes or no yes 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 master yes. yeah oh no in praise the lord okay there was a evil principality guarding persia hallelujah and this angel could not deliver this message to daniel could not deliver this message to daniel because the prince the prince of persia that means a evil authority came in between you know that messenger angel trying not to get the message to daniel and this angel was stuck with that prince of persia not able to deliver the message to daniel but because of this situation god saw this situation and god sent another powerful angel called michael and then this angel this angel was released to come to daniel praise the lord and then he said from the first day i was sent to you but the 21 day i am coming why because the angel of persia that means a evil principality stopped me do you know every time when i used to go to all the villages to preach okay uh, we used to go because in every village there is a uh kavali devil do you know this there is a kavali devil or uh they call them as god small god yeah the gentiles yeah. or uh mm. we in our terms we call this as angel or in other words we call it as fallen angel you know yeah. this is the watchman yeah. angel you know it mm. keeps a track do you know that once you enter that village trying see how beautifully i'm drawing and doing showing everything to you praise the lord once you enter that village praise the lord where the people are there this kavali angel will be sitting at the entrance do you know that how many of you all know this yes i know i know who is this justina madhavi 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 okay yeah this kavali angel is sitting at the entrance and once you pass this angel sorry once you pass that arch you are entering into the territory of that angel you are entering into that territory praise the lord it knows where you are going what you are doing to whom which uh, uh, what you call it knows to which uh, my first family you are visiting everything it keeps her and i tell you my dear friends unless you win the war with that angel it is you cannot win the battle you cannot win so pray for these warrior angels to come around along with you always pray for this guardian angels to guard your house and family even to guard your husband to guard your properties to guard your uh cars to guard your wives to guard your children to guard your future everything these angels in, in you know something an angel was guarding my bike you know i have told so many times about cases of my bike it filled petrol also for me although no petrol was there in the bike so like that god is the one okay who can always take charge and bless you my dear friend so we are done exactly 1 hour 6:30 to 7:30 we are done praise the lord how many of you all like the teaching how many of you like the teaching can you give me some encouragement please i want to hear from you what did you understand give me some encouragement come on i am a man i am not a robot chalo give me some encouragement what did you understand how did this touch you or is there any doubt you have come on new learning sana new learning because 
all this we have he heard and all this we have like uh, read so many times but this is something new from the roots we are learning that right. is what i feel with the past experiences now i can remember so right. i like it very much yes praise the lord so dear friends uh, thank you sister madhu uh, beautifully she said i have learnt it uh, newly praise the lord anybody else want to tell your uh, witness about this it's anybody? really interesting pastor and uh, uh, yes we know like you know, the angels do different kind of uh, works but it's more detailed when you explain uh, with scriptural you know with scriptural background and all and it's it's really what to say it's really more uh, eye opener and uh, we need to use the employ the angels actually so yes. many unemployed angels are there around us we don't use them yes so uh, uh, that's what we need to utilize their uh, help exactly and thank you for that that yes. this is very interesting amen and you know the key verse you can always keep it as hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 you are in the company of innumerable angels you can mm -hmm. employ them you can please make them to work for you they are ministering servants they are different angels with different functions protective administering you know messengers uh, fighting warfare so employ mm -hmm. the angels as uh, per your need in fact okay so employ those angels okay and uh, uh, i am telling you the sky is the limit the more see uh, today uh, I, even we all have to pray that our bible teaching ministry you know angels will bring more people to this ministry also so uh, what you call and more people on our tuesday meetings and whatever hindrances this may be some demonic powers are stopping the growth of our ministry we have to fight with the power of those angels so like the more we know the more we uh, are aware of the true teaching hallelujah and uh, uh, we are more strong more empowered hallelujah so remember okay uh, i don't need to fight my battle there are angels who are fighting the battle for me because they they are seeing the face of the father and he who touches me touches the apple of god's eye anybody keeps with me i am not going to keep uh, face to face with him uh, box to box hand to hand you know mouth to mouth i am not going to do anything my angels will do the job hallelujah so you know uh, my angels are very powerful to bless my partners my angels are very powerful you know to perform miracles my angels are very powerful to guide us in to whichever place uh, you know we have to go so like this you have to think about yourself like this you have to always be aware of the presence of angels around you hallelujah and you always have to talk to them you always have to activate them if you don't activate they will sleep down on you and they will be present but they cannot do anything unless you ask unless you pray so go ahead pray send angels no whenever my children go out no i say angel of the lord go along with them because i know hyderabad is such a place accidents accident oh my god so many accidents you know so i always tell god lord let your angel go around my children and then when they go to the college i tell lord father let your angels protect my children from the wrong people oh god with addictions and all those things so like i i constantly keep you know uh, in touch with the angel of the lord hallelujah i know that there are angels around me who are listening to me in fact you know i have uh, next teaching maybe i will tell you how i have seen uh, i think three times i have seen angels face to face hallelujah face to face maybe the next uh, time i will tell you in what circumstances i saw angel face to face so uh, the angels are real they are your assets they are your they are sent for you you know because you mean so much to god you are not just a, a citizen on this earth no you are the citizen of this earth and of heaven where everything is noted about you okay so take your calling very seriously take your spiritual call very seriously don't live just for the world live also for god doing his work supporting his ministry supporting and strengthening his work on this earth and learning more about him and you know your life will be beautiful hallelujah god bless you okay thank you all for joining take care until we meet again we will definitely 
no more. This Bible study is more. So I will send you the ad. Please forward it to as many people as possible. Okay. So uh, Sister Banu, I want to yes, assign, I want to assign one one person to follow up so that I don't get the load because I want to have the load of understanding God's word only. Follow sure. up with the Bible study. No. So can you follow up with Sister Madhavi? Sister Madhavi, are you there? Yes, I am here. Anna. Now, okay, I'm Sister here. Banu, I'll send her a number. Okay, just before the Bible teaching on Friday and on Sunday, please follow up with her. Okay. And sure. Zipporah, and Zipporah already you are following, no problem. Okay. And uh, I'll send you with the uh, uh, other details of uh, what he called. Uh, yeah. Thomas, I are you there? He's not there, no? I Thomas think, is not here. Yeah. yeah. We will ask Thomas to follow with another group of people. Okay. No problem. Okay. Until uh, now, you just take uh, charge of the women uh, system, Banu. Thank you. Okay. Sure. See you okay, all. Pastor. Okay. Bye bye. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Bless you. Bye. 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 Bye.